Hi and welcome to another video. This is just a quick one. If you've got a Raspberry Pi for Octodash or any other purpose and you want a power LED to show through on a, a Pi case, in this case I've got a bespoke one with a screen attached to it, but it just might be a standard uh, case. As long as it's got room for an LED, uh, we, we can fit one. Now I'm just gonna power on the Pi here and you can see the LED comes on straight away so we know it's actually powered on. Uh, extremely handy because at the moment I've got a soft power on power off as well which I will go through in another video so you might want to use that in conjunction with this LED. It's really really easy to fit so let's go through and see what you need. First of all you need an LED. Uh, there's quite a few here uh, anything between 2 and 5 volts is acceptable. I've got I've bought a, a kit of them here. It was well I couldn't just buy the one unfortunately. So for just a, a few pounds I've got a, a large number here. They're 5mm and 3mm of different colours. So that's one thing that you'll need. Uh, second is a resistor. It needs to be a, a 330 ohm resistor. Uh, that's to protect the Pi, so we actually just need one of those, but again ended up buying a pack of 25. In fact, uh, I bought a, a huge range of them uh, simply because it was so cheap to do so. So that, that's something you'll need. Um, additionally, uh, connectors for the Pi. Uh, these come in a, a, a wide ribbon cable and you just basically pull a couple off whichever colours you want. Uh, we will be looking at two different colours because it's positive and negative but yeah uh, and we will be chopping one end off because we'll be soldering to the LED. One other thing I recommend having is a box full of heat shrink because this hopefully you can see that will go over the the legs of the LED to insulate so it will go like that so we'll have one on each leg so very handy to have that to protect from any shorts and these boxes of heat shrink are pretty cheap and readily available you can get everything from Amazon in brief you get your LED in, in my case I've got a uh, Let's pick a, a nice red LED. You've got a, a long and a short leg. The long leg is positive, the anode, and the short leg is the negative, which is the cathode. We're going to be attaching our resistor. We have to solder our resistor onto the short leg. So you've got your short leg there. Uh, solder the resistor onto the short leg. I would, in my case, I've chopped the leg off quite short and I've chopped the resistor off quite short just to make sure it doesn't stick out very far. And then we will cut this off and solder it to the end of the resistor. So you've got LED on the short leg, resistor, and then one of these cables. And on the other leg, again, once you've done that, chop the long leg down and attach another wire, solder another wire on as well. And before you attach this, make sure that you slide the heat shrink on. Otherwise, if you do it afterwards, you probably won't be able to get it over the fitting. So let's do a little bit of soldering.
So once you've soldered the LED and put the heat shrink on, uh, as you can see here I've put one layer on each of the cables and then a larger heat shrink over the two just to, to make a, a good job of it. It's then a case of popping it into the pins, the GPIO pins. So let's have a look and see where we've popped that. So the positive will go into pin 8, so that's the fourth one along from the end. The negative can go to any ground and there is a ground pin at pin 9, so that's the fifth one along on the inside. And it's as simple as that. So that's all wired up. Uh, there is one little bit of code that has to be entered uh, in the config file. Uh, so it's a case of removing your micro SD card and popping it in your PC. And we'll just go and add that one line of text right now. So once you've loaded up your micro SD card, You'll and op opened it up in Explorer, you'll see all of the files that are on the card. You want the config, which is a text document. Just right click that and you can, there we go, left click and right click in my case. Uh, you can either open it in Notepad or Notepad++. I'm going to open it in Notepad++. And there we have the file here and let's just make sure it fits the screen and all you need to do is add this one line at the bottom which is enable underscore UART equals one that enables uh, the pin 8 on the Pi to work correctly with the LED so just type enable underscore UART equals one and save the file and then you can eject the file, uh, uh, the card, and pop it back in your Pi. Okay, just to sum up now, I've got the LED correctly plugged in. I'm just going to um, power up now that I've put the micro SD card back in. So let's put the power on. And there we go. You can see it booting up the lights, but if you've got this as a, a case LED, it could be quite handy so you actually know that the Pi is on. And as you saw earlier, I did have a switch, which I've uh, actually got uh, here. You see the red push switch, which has uh, leads. That will actually put it into a, a um, suspended state, and I'm going to be covering that in another video so if you're interested to see me doing that rather than the, the usual thing of a hard power off which can corrupt a micro SD card then please like and subscribe and I'll be able to show you that video shortly thank you very much indeed